guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to take sharper photos. Now, it's absolutely gonna be aimed at people who maybe are starting out, maybe you've got a kit lens, maybe you've bought your first Prime, you're experimenting with different types of photography, but you're just finding that those photos are not coming out as sharp as you would like, or as sharp as you've seen other people's photos coming out. Now, this is the first day of our content advent calendar. We've got new content every single day. So if you like Tutorial Tuesday, if you like reviews, if you like all kinds of stuff that we do, we're gonna have a new video every single day in the lead up to Christmas, which is both exciting and of course, daunting. But for now, we'll stick with exciting. Now, when you're trying to take sharper photos, when you're trying to increase the sharpness of your photo, there are a lot of different things that play a big role in the overall sharpness of the photo. So we're going to talk about things like aperture, shutter speed, ISO, but we're also going to talk about things like focusing and massively importantly, we're going to talk about light as well, because that can change how your photo looks and absolutely play a huge role in the sharpness of your photo. So let's start off by talking about the settings. Let's start with aperture. So of course, when you use a lower f-stop number, so something like f2.8, f1.8, f1.4, you're gonna have a shallower depth of field. Now some lenses, it'll actually affect the sharpness as well. And when you stop down to something like f4, f5.6, you start closing up that aperture, you'll actually get a bump up in sharpness as well. That's something to kind of take into consideration, maybe play around with your lens when it comes to that, because sometimes some lenses just are sharper at those kind of stopped down apertures. Now that's not to say that you can't get nice sharp photos at something like f1.8 or even f1.4, you absolutely can. But the other thing you need to take into account there is that shallow depth of field. What is going to be the focal point of the image? What is it gonna be in focus? So for example, a portrait portrait shot at f1.4 or f1.8, you'll want to focus on the eyes because you'll want to make sure those are nice and sharp. And generally speaking, at something like f1.4, especially if you use something like an 85mm or a 50mm, you'll start to get fall off in terms of things going out of focus already by kind of the back of the head. So things like hair might start to go a little bit out of focus and therefore be a little bit softer. So that is definitely worth kind of changing your expectations into what is going to be sharp in that photo and actually increasing the sharpness doesn't mean everything has to be nice and sharp in a portrait with a very very shallow depth of field the eyes are going to be sharp ideally and then everything else might start to blur out with a very blurred out background but like i say if you're struggling with that maybe try stopping down f4 f5.6 with a zoom lens especially a kit lens you can still get a blurred background by zooming to something like 135 mil or whatever it can zoom out to and actually using f4 or f5.6 to get a nice sharp portrait. Now shutter speed can play a big part in this as well. Obviously the faster the shutter speed, the more you're freezing the action. So if you've got moving subjects, if you're trying to freeze something like water, wildlife, whatever it might be, you wanna use a nice fast shutter speed. That's gonna allow you to, like I say, freeze the action and get a nice sharp photo with regards to whatever's moving. A slower shutter speed will generally result in slight blur, which of course is not particularly sharp. Generally about one 400th of a second will freeze most human motion, unless it's like a 100 meter dash or something like that, where you might wanna use a faster shutter speed. But if you've got anything else moving around, water, sand, whatever it might be, you might wanna use a faster shutter speed. Generally speaking, if you can use a faster shutter speed with whatever aperture you've chosen for your kind of creative look without having to bump up that ISO, that's gonna be great for keeping things nice and sharp and freezing any movement that might otherwise cause a bit of blur. This is also really important for kind of minimizing any handshake when you're actually holding the camera, which might also result in a little bit of blur in the image, which just softens it a touch, just reduces that sharpness. So by having a fast enough shutter speed, you're counteracting that problem. Of course, image stabilization plays a big part in this as well. If you have an image stabilized lens or a camera with built-in image stabilization, it's gonna really, really help with actually getting rid of that handshake. Because even if you think your hands aren't shaking, there'll be tiny little micro movements, which will essentially, if you have a slower shutter speed, cause a little bit of blur, which might just look like a slightly softer image. Now ISO is an interesting one because essentially you want to try and keep this as low as possible. That's going to give you the least amount of digital noise 
and it's going to give you generally the best quality image. Now, of course, this isn't always possible. And actually, in the last few years, especially cameras have become very, very good with higher ISO values. So there's a little bit of a trade off. Now you want to try and keep that ISO level as low as possible. ISO 100, 200, something like that is, is great. That's going to give you the least amount of noise, but you do want to try and take a nice bright image because the brighter the image generally, unless you're in ridiculous low light conditions, the brighter the image, the sharper the image is going to look. You don't want to underexpose the image too much because yeah, you can pull back a lot of detail in post and that's not too much of a problem, but it can result in a slightly softer look to your image. So slightly pushing that ISO, if you are in a slightly lower light situation can be great for just helping with things like having a faster shutter speed or stopping down your aperture and still retaining a nice bright image. Now, of course, we mentioned focusing a little bit when we're talking about aperture. This is a big, big deal when it comes to having a nice sharp image. You want to make sure you're focused properly. Now, generally speaking, autofocus now is super, super good. So if you're doing portraits, most cameras have an eye autofocus function and a lot of them it is fantastic. That's a great way of making sure the eyes are in focus. But even if you're doing landscape, street, food, whatever it is, the autofocus is generally so good across the board now that you can just rely on that. But you need to make sure you are setting that up properly. So for example, using a focus point and actually moving it around to focus on the right part of the image. If you're taking a landscape photo and you focus too close to the camera, the background is going to get very, very soft. I've actually come up against that myself. I've, I've suffered from that mistake a few times in the past. You focus on something too close and that focal plane is not going to stretch out all the way to the background, even if you're shooting at something like F8 or F11. So you need to make sure you're focusing in the right area, whatever kind of photography it is. And if it's landscape, you certainly want to make sure you're focusing kind of at a good distance from the camera so that you've got kind of a nice deep focal plane to capture the foreground, the background as well. This is also extremely important if you're using a shallow depth of field. You want to make sure you focus on the right part of the image because otherwise the wrong part's going to be soft and out of focus or just everything's going to have that slightly soft look to it, which is not what you want at all. So the focus point is really, really important. Now, of course, you could use manual focus and you could use something like focus peaking to help with that. Generally speaking, I think autofocus is, is just so good now. It's almost a shame not to just use it because I think it it's such a great tool for taking a photo, but you still need to set it up properly. Now, we've got all the kind of less exciting stuff out of the way. That stuff you can kind of tick off as you go. But one of the biggest things for me and just in general in photography for affecting the sharpness and the look of your photo is the light, the direction of the light, how it's hitting your subject, how you kind of set yourself up with the positioning of the light and all kinds of stuff like that. I want to show you two photos. Now, these are both taken in my dining room, so nothing super special. One is taken with the light kind of behind the subject. And then this second one is taken with the light hitting my subject. Now, you can see there is an instant difference between the two photos. I've not really edited them because I wanted to kind of really make the point of how these look straight out of the camera. With the light hitting the subject and then a darker background, there's more contrast, but also the, the actual subject of the image is much better exposed and that light is making it much better with details and stuff like that and it creates a much sharper image. Now with the light behind the subject, that means I'm getting the darker side of the subject. It means that the actual subject is darker while the background is lighter. And we're not getting as much detail because the light isn't hitting it directly. And that means we're not getting as much sharpness. It's a softer kind of look to things. I'm having to change my settings to expose it up a little bit and it's not working as perhaps I would like. It doesn't look as good. Thinking about how the light is going to hit your subject, where it's going to fall onto your subject, is such a huge part of taking a sharper image. There's lots of different ways that you could allow the light to hit your subject. So you could actually go for a dramatic look, creating very nice contrast and shadows and stuff like that. But as long as there's light actually hitting your subject, it's going to be a sharper overall image. There's gonna be more detail, more clarity naturally. And that's something you don't have to then add as much in post, which doesn't always work. And it's a bit like adding sharpening in Lightroom or Photoshop or something like that, it, it never looks particularly great. And you don't want to be in the position where you're trying to do that. And then the final tip, and this sounds super silly, 
is actually just to clean your lens. And I know that sounds obvious, but we all forget about it, right? And then we get back and there's dust spots or water spots or whatever it might be. Cleaning your lens, it just does make a big deal. You know, sensor as well, if you have a nice clean sensor, things are just gonna look better. You're, gonna, you're not gonna have any problems with dust spots and stuff like that. So absolutely, bring a lens wipe out with you. And just give it a little clean, you know what I mean? Just makes the world a difference. Now there's links in the description for all the kits used for the photos, the video, this video, everything for this particular video. Of course, there's gonna be a new video every day, so I will be seeing you tomorrow. Don't forget to like and subscribe, especially if you wanna keep up with all of the videos we have coming over this Christmas period. If there's something in particular you'd like to see, let me know down in the comments, because not all the spaces are filled in. I mean, 24 videos is a lot of videos. So let me know down in the comments. They're not all, it's not like I filmed them all. It's not like I'm ready. <laughs> so let me know what you think down in the comments. I will of course see you tomorrow. And as always, thanks for watching.